or I usually think right about recording right after I say something really st strong intention, like I just yeah. did. To, okay. You know. So what it sounds like is that all of the work that you've been doing to get yourself out there, to get yourself seen and to promote is producing the results that you intended it to produce. It is 100%. And, and so you're getting all the opportunities there. So just to, to celebrate that mm -hmm. first, mm -hmm. rather than go to, and I'm supposed to be doing this, <laughs> like, right? So to just celebrate the fact that everything you've been working on for all of this time is actually working. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. this is what you wanted to have happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. it creates like more work and emergencies and things for you to deal with. But well, you wouldn't say emergency. <laughs> yes, but but to you know to just celebrate the fact that everything you've been doing worked. Yes. Yes. And then and then the okay, plan is working. Yeah. So now, what do I do? How do I handle that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So. Yes. Like to, to make sure we get the celebration part in there. Mm. I celebrated by watching a show on Netflix for two hours this morning. Yes. <laughs> like sometimes. I was going to celebrate with that, with Ben and Jerry's ice cream, which is not on my current diet, <laughs> but I don't want to celebrate with that kind of celebration. So, yeah. Yeah. No, oh, I've got an idea. I'm, um, I didn't realize I could uh, create videos directly through QuickTime on my computer. Uh, David Gibson, he said, oh, just make a QuickTime video. And I'm like, what? So uh, that's a lot easier than setting up my phone, uh, videoing on the phone, transferring the video to my computer, reformatting it, and then putting it on YouTube, right? So uh, the, the QuickTime is a much, it's a, it's a, literally, it's a shortcut. And so what I would like to do, I think, is do a video update and have the video update on my uh, as the newsletter and just summarize everything that I've done uh, for the past, whatever, whatever, whatever. Uh, I'll leave a cute little backdrop with my dragon over there and you know, move my computer portably. So and I think I'll just do that. Yeah. Easier. It is easier. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I'll have some physical stuff in the, in the newsletter. Um, what really upset me, it didn't really upset me. I was in this, I was in this energy of, of wealth, of abundance and everything. And, and I uh, had this sort of uh, experience, experience of expanded awareness of what wealth and abundance means while I was at a yoga class. And I came home and I started to write this really great introductory thing in my workshop. And it was fantastic and it was beautiful and it had some, I found some flowers and I had the picture of the flowers and I was talking about their, their, their bloom of their, uh, their beauty and abundance and, uh, you know, creating a paradise, even on a street corner in downtown New Haven. And, and, and yet their, their, you know, their experience is, is ephemeral yet we as humans can bloom our entire life. Something like, you know, like that, like cheesy and profound. And then it just disappeared. It like it got deleted from my mailchimp because I went to change the color of the background of my newsletter. And I don't know what happened. It just deleted and I couldn't find it again. And I got so pissed off. <laughs> I just saving. Like, you gotta save. Oh, it's supposed to auto-save. And it didn't. So oh. for some reason, for some reason, for some reason, the um the master editors. <laughs> thought that it was maybe a little imbalanced or I don't know, but I'm going, I, I've been waiting for the energy uh, and the space to be created to, to recreate that uh, or, uh, or create something else. I, I still think that's a beautiful picture and I want to um, capitalize upon that. There was also a picture the same day with a, a picture on Instagram of a, of a, of a, of a woman who's over a hundred years old standing next to a rhododendron that she planted or was planted for her, whatever, over a hundred years ago. And the rhododendron bush, she's like here. And the rhododendron bush is like this. Yeah. 
and with all the, the like blossoms everywhere. And I put that in also as part of that, uh, the writing. And I thought it was a beautiful start to this newsletter. And it will re be created, recreated. Yeah. So, um, you're right. It's the celebration that I forget and that I, um, that I, I, uh, need to find out how to celebrate with. Yeah. I don't it's, know. It's the natural know. negativity bias that's survival based. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, a lot is a lot went on this weekend. I'm so grateful for this busyness, uh, this fullness of my, my life. I really am. And yeah, so it's good. As, as I tune, I'm seeing, you know, now as you're talking about what, you know, what you just said, it's like energy going this way, right? So it's like expanding out instead of, you know, collapsing in. Oh, I want to, um, can I read you something? Yeah. Uh, I don't know why I want to read you, but. Um, so I got a, 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 a glimpse of a gift of an insight that I wasn't expecting from a per person who came to my sound healing on Thursday. And during that sound healing, I had chosen to work with golden calcite uh, or honey calcite rather as the uh, calcites and specifically honey calcites are uh, associated with suns and like the, the, our, our star, our sun here the central sun Alcyon, the central sun of the universe, the original sun, all these suns, very powerful sun medicine because we're gearing up towards the lion's gate portal. And that could have been why, but this is what this woman saw. Uh, I was at your sound healing yesterday at the bridge. Very cool. Thank you for that. So I don't see auras very often. The last time was several years ago during my second level Reiki training. Anyway, right after you finished yesterday, as you were speaking, I noticed a, and this word is capital, crazy golden aura around you. It wasn't the actual light fixture behind you. It was different because it was moving and expanding. And then it sort of shot up out of your crown slash upper body and then turned purple around the edges. Uh, I've never witnessed anything like that before. So it sort of took me aback. I don't read auras, so I'm not sure yet what it means. And I wanted to tell you afterwards, but was still wrapping my brain around it. So I just figured I should mention it. LOL, have a good day weekend. <laughs> and so um, <clears throat> it's funny because she, uh, she was brought by a woman who came to one of my, re uh, my previous ones I haven't seen in a while. And uh, my friend was like, oh, thanks. It was great. And then this, this woman who sent me this, she kind of looked at me like, <laughs> and then walked out in silence on Thursday. And I was like, oh, what did I do? But <laughs> I mean, and she must have thought I was an alien. But surprise, <laughs> as far as, I, as, far as I've, I've learned, uh, that's actually what an extraterrestrial aura looks like, um, it, that it's golden and white. And, um, you know, in, in level three white time energy healing, we go uh, in depth in, in terms of uh, beginning to read auras, which are extremely complicated, complicated things. And, and she says when people when people start to um, progress spiritually, it's like uh, all the all the colors of the aura of, I guess, average people mean personal things to them. Right. So you can't go and, and go buy the book and say red means this. It just doesn't work. But the, what's all what's common is is the purple, the, the blue and the white and the gold, they kind of start start at the outer edges and they work their way in. And so if I have purple tinge on the edges of my aura, that means that I am uh, quite uh, seriously spiritually progressing to a very higher to a much higher state of awareness, which was such a gift to me, because with that with this uh, growth of spirit, spiritual growth comes an understanding of why I felt so frustrated in my younger life that I had these seeds of awareness 
but the energy was I just closed it off so much because I, I couldn't handle that sort of level of understanding as a child and I'm not I wasn't really supposed to and and coming from a, a challenging environment it's it's ironic because my 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 family life growing up was full of love full of love but there was a lot of worry a lot of worry and a lot of fear and and I, I had a lot of work I've done a lot of work on worry I call it fear-based love I mean it's it's almost like toxic in its strangulation of one's uh, freedom to grow and so this just all came in and, and I can feel it like nurturing me like coming in from around and through my heart and back out and it's just I'm able to breathe energetically more so than I ever have in, uh, before in my life because I've allowed the, the my own walls of uh, protection to be uh, dissolved gradually gradually like like peeling you know like those uh, thin layers of protected plastic you buy on things like on the face of a of a cell phone or something it's like you peel one of those really thin layers and then you peel another one of those thin layers and you peel another one of those thin layers and sometimes you don't even realize or notice that those layers have peeled Mm -hmm. And, and it, this is brought, uh, I was just last night on with my dear friend, Lori Moore, uh, she went through a, a life changing uh, journey of awakening through an extreme challenging physical uh, uh, health crisis. And we just reconvened last night, uh, a group of global people that do very high spiritual work. And it was so rewarding to return to her energy and the group's energy. And we were talking about such things as uh, finding inner, for her, it was inner, inner uh, contentment. And for me, it's inner peace. Like I have this inner peace now that I, I, I've never had. I'm, I'm not striving to find that peace. I mean, my, my personality, Leo rising is very, it can be very explosive and grandiose and, and loud and strong and, and all of that, but then I can, you know, and learn to, but that's all like the, that's like, uh, what is that like? What's the nice metaphor? It's like the, the, the core, like I, I'm, uh, sunflower is not the right thing. Like imagine like a, a I, for some reason I see like a, a sea, a sea anemone. No, that's not even the right thing. Uh, something with a really strong core with all these really loose ribbon tendrils in all directions that can flap and flutter and, and move around and everything like this. That's my personality. Um, and this in here is my core. <laughs> and it's like, I can get my personality to go like the anemones can like, you know, just pull themselves really. So yeah, it's the anemone, but like this, ah! that's kind of where I am right now. But in all of this is always this now, this core that I've been developing. Mm, so, lovely. I, Thank you so much for all this. It's like, I'm going to post this on YouTube too. <laughs> Self-aware, my journey. <laughs> anyway, um, so again, a lot has been going on. And um, yeah, and I, there's just there's this desire to serve in, in new ways. Like I'm certainly integrating crystals in a new way into everything that I'm doing. And I, I have this fantastically powerful symbol uh, that it's actually it's taught in the level four gemstone class. I might have mentioned this to you before, but that was the first class I took in 2006 when I was clueless. <laughs> I was you know, clueless. And um, I had no idea that, I mean, I had this, I had this material and I, I, I had this ability since that class, since I was 26 years old. And yet it didn't it didn't fully come into my comprehension. <laughs> We're getting the good stuff. What? We're getting the good stuff. Oh, I wanted to, to get the 144, different, different fork. Oh, sweet. Ooh. So just, it, just feel it, the difference in the energy. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Well, because I'm talking about like universal stuff right now. <laughs> no. So I had this ability since I was 26 and I didn't comprehend it until I was with Zari uh, over the solstice going over this to teach students the level four class. And it's this very simple symbol that can uh, permanently alter the frequency of a stone or a combination. 
So it's like an instant permanent program. And so now every time that I, I, I give someone a stone or a combination or like what I, what I did yesterday with one of the, the, the quick heart chakra layouts for the people, I, I, I permanently programmed it for their greatest good or for whatever, you know, something like that. Or like the people that are going through health crises, like someone's going through a cancer thing, like I, I gave them a combination. I said permanent recovery from this from this condition, and I don't really tell them about it. I don't. I mean, it's just like I, I'm back to my like light work espionage. You know? <laughs> I like, like that. Like, I like, that. like when, my, the first I go when I was in San Francisco, I did so much light work espionage. It's like. Uh, you know, it's like you're dropping the glow stick in the cavern, right? Ha ha. <laughs> like, uh, it might, it might, you know, you know, fade at some point, but, um, you know, we got to bring light there somehow. But anyway, it's just, it's just, it's fun and it's easy and it brings me joy. And it's another part expression of that, that abundance and that wealth that I, I started talking about with you that like, I have this, this, you know, this, um, uh, access to these extremely powerful universal forces. And it's great if you have access, but it means nothing unless you use them. So, you know, engagement with the knowledge is where I'm at right now. And uh, yeah, so very exciting stuff. I'm all over the map, all over the map. Hmm. Anyway, uh, yeah. I'm gonna unplug you so I can still hear you while I go get some. Okay. But now I'm just taking it in and reminding myself how you reminded me to celebrate everything that I've, I've been accomplished. Yeah. And, and I am, and, and this right now I'm celebrating it by sharing it with you. And, and I think that's one good way to do it as opposed to dilute. It's interesting. There's some things that, you know, in working with prosperity consciousness, uh, it, uh, it, it's a caution that you don't, uh, dilute the energy by telling everyone everything that happened <laughs> or you know that is happening like there's a lot of things that you need to really keep to yourself and, and hold to yourself for that inner power and it's not exactly keeping secrets but it's uh reserving your your energy uh, and there are many of those things that i mean this little things being uh like just it feels like that i'm being uh you know, I'm riding this divine wave of expansion. And one, one of the basic uh, prosperity affirmations that I do every day, uh, and I say in the car over and over again, is I prosper everyone and everything, everyone and everything prospers me now. I prosper everyone and everything now, everyone and everything prospers me now and i'm literally seeing that coming true i've been saying this affirmation daily probably since about march and what happens is that resonance builds up inside you and that's exactly what the universe starts bringing oh so I have to, I'm doing a, a sermon on Sunday at a spiritualist church. And I was going to talk, I'm talking about uh, prosperity, uh, abundance and gratitude. And, and this is good practice. And that's well, a lot of stuff. <laughs> is you're yawning? <laughs> Wait, who's receiving? No. <laughs> so, a, um, oh, um, let me tell you what I put in, what I put in the field. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what I went up to go get is I've talked to you a little bit about phenakite mm -hmm. and I haven't heard anything about phenakite in, in universal light time. So it's, this, it, it's, it is one of the stones uh, that's recommended to place uh, in the on that mandala and protection symbol. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is phenakite um, solution. Oh my home, goodness. Home, homeopathic phenakite. Wow. And um, so, um, the the company that I that I got some phenakite from, they they make them. They're called pentas. And oh, so I went up to go get to get this, 
and I don't have it in spray form. I really wish I had it spray spray it into the field. Something wanted some attention. So, um, but I but I waved it around in the field, and then placed it on the heart. Ah. Here's so. my little piece of phenakite. Yes. So I will hold this. <laughs> um. So, you know, as you were talking about, you know, prospering yourself and others, just seeing, having put the phenakite in the field, I think of phenakite as really bringing, and bringing this white light energy. And um, so it's like seeing this cycling through of that prospering that you're talking about. And, you know, it's spreading around. I See, it calms down it after for, I finally talked about it. What? I just programmed it for um, uh, complete and authentic prosperity. <laughs> oh, awesome. Ooh. Ooh, I like that. And yeah, um, last night, Lori was sharing how, you know, when one person shares, it, it, it helps other people, it changes their field. It also uh, changes the field of the, the people or person, person or people receiving. And it's about, uh, you know, when you communicate, you're like, you're changing each other's fields. And it, it just made a lot of, it made more sense to me uh, tangibly than it ever has before. Um, Alex and I had a, an amazing conversation last night where we reassessed the understanding we have in our relationship in terms of certain aspects of it like involvement in each other's personal lives uh, within the sphere of the relationship. And I feel so much closer to him energetically because we both were able to peel some of those, you know, layers from our hearts. And that's really the energy of that's out there right now is this, is this releasing this, this, purging and cleansing to make way for the the new abundance that's coming through and uh, it's a divine abundance it's not it's not like you know ch transferring into or translating into uh you know savings account abundance or paycheck abundance that's in fact that's a very uh, that's a very a physical and therefore a dense aspect or understanding of abundance that abundance is so much more than that and that's what what i'm i'm focusing on right now and i think abundance is meaningless without gratitude i think gratitude is almost like the scaffolding that you generate in order for the abundance to uh truly manifest in one's life yeah so oh this is so cute <laughs> this is the angel forks i was just oh my before you said that i said i feel little angels around me <laughs> i was like oh they're all around me <laughs> i swear to god <laughs> even my printer wants in on this one it's, it's, it's doing the automatic cleansing it's turned on <laughs> You might hear it in the background. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Ooh. Yep, here it goes. Time for, the, as we're all cleansing, as is the picture. <laughs> oh my God, this is hilarious. I, I do want to put this one like on TikTok or something. Um, uh, at the sound healing yesterday with the acupuncturist, we're going to do more. It's amazing. It was for the summer, it was for the heart. I use the heart, rest in peace, heart chakra layout. Um, and uh, it was in this, I mean, 10 by 10 room with six people. Not a lot of room. My energy is very loud usually. So I took the opportunity of, of really uh, tempering the sound healing to be, to be strong, but reserved. Because if I were to, if I were to just um, be, um, I, if I were to, to disregard the, the physical limitations of the room and, and do my full thing, people would have left there with, with ear damage because it's a very strong force. 
and pressure is the word, I guess, in, 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 in sound, uh, you know, that's engineering. And so I did this really amazing thing with the, uh, the angels, very soft, very, very profound, very delicate. And, and then I was going to switch to something else. And, and the energy was very, very, very high. And I, I pick up one bowl and I go to like the heart chakra bowl and I pick up another, another, a, a mallet. I pick up one mallet and then I pick up the, the second mallet and some being whips it out of my hand and it whacks into the root chakra bowl and it goes boing. And like, and it was like the energy went right down to the root chakra. Everyone was like, <laughs> and like, and, and um, uh, her name is Guljan. Her husband, her husband, just happened to have been videoing that moment so you know he's in the hallway and he's like doing some stuff filming the artwork in the hallway while my sounds in the background and he pans over to the entrance to the room and then he sees me like slowly slowly boing! and it was like you can see they can see the mallet just like whoa it was ridiculous i've never had I, in all of my years I mean, years of doing live sound healing, I have never had a mallet fly out of my hand. <laughs> it was, and I was like, well, thanks for the collaboration, you know, but they really wanted, they really wanted to bring all that stuff down, I guess, quickly, you know, it's great. This place is great up here. It's great. You know how great it is. It's great. But without, without that foundation, without the root chakra, without connecting to the earth, you're going to just drift away. It's like the balloon that gets away. You know what the, the ultimate fate of that balloon could possibly be to kill a dolphin. You don't and want so, to. Be, and sometimes it has to be shocking. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. To, to wake people up. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. So I'm going to use that. Um, if, uh, you know, you know, you don't want to be the balloon that kills the dolphin. You gotta stay tethered, girl. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. Um, in my private sessions, I have had my guides come up to me and go, "You gotta scream. <laughs> you gotta make a really loud, startling sound right now." <laughs> and like, <laughs> and I do, I do, and it, it's just what you say. And you know, we kind of laugh. About about it after i've never had anyone be really mad or or scared scared like they always just needed what it was um yeah and it's funny because sometimes i don't do it because i'm not quite sure that it's my ego that wants to do it <laughs> because for whatever reason but whenever i do actually startle people uh it's very beneficial like jumping being in the hot the hot tub and then jumping in the cold pool that's one of the most therapeutic things for me if ever you want to shock anyone else's energy out of your system, you know, like the Bikram yoga, I, not all the time I go and I go into the shower immediately in the cold water, you know, and it just, ooh, it just gets all that crap flowing and getting it out of you. you yeah. Know? So this is what I say. And I imagine you might've heard me say it before. If something comes up to say, and I am resisting it, it doesn't go away until I say it. Right. And as soon as I say it or do the shocking whatever thing, it's like the energy shifts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's like, this is what being guided is, following guidance. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes my head gets in the way. Mm -hmm. But it's just like the guides say, hey, come on, get mm -hmm. with it. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's interesting. I 100% agree and relate and experience this. Like I, um, it's like things come into my head and it's not about sitting in meditation and hearing the voice of the angel or whatever, or your guide. It's like they're, they're, they're behind the scenes working and, and creating the optimal path, um, uh, probabilities for us. Uh, there's a, a local foot reflexologist and she also took some of my gemstone classes years ago and her name would not leave my head and i wanted to get a session with her just get a, a foot reflexology just get foot, foot and i didn't i didn't but it was still there it was still there and suddenly kind of like finally stopped and i realized what happened is there was a window an optimal window of engagement that you know was open and available for me much like a, a you know planetary transit 
that like I, I miss that opportunity, but another one will come. And, and it, it, that, it's interesting because you're right, it's, it persists. And if you don't act upon it, then, you know, that potential timeline might will collapse and something else will happen instead. And I set the intention, well, it means something better is going to happen if you didn't do it in that moment, as opposed to the disappointment and, and you know, guilt and judgment, which is the opposite uh, reaction that can occur if you don't take action. Ah, listen to that. <laughs> Yeah. They're really, they're really like strong and loud. So it's like yeah. what you're talking about. It's like, yes. Yeah. And, you know, thinking about this from a, from a, you know, human design planet perspective, it's like you have transits mm -hmm. and, you know, like three moon positions over the course of the day. And, mm -hmm. you know, for some of the other, you know, Mercury, you know, the couple of days. So, mm -hmm. It could be that, you know, the timing for the foot reflexology was you yeah. got a couple of days here yeah. and then whoop, and then yeah. the transit's out. Yeah. Yeah. Timing for my beautiful ent uh, uh, introductory prose of my newsletter well, it disappeared. So I guess it wasn't time yet. <laughs> yeah. What's interesting is that we can also uh, shape are the physical structures like I can take action and and send emails just by the days of the week on the calendar, uh, which needs to happen. And you need to have some sort of linear <laughs> linear interference to the uh, it, within or um, or I should say linear uh, linear sculpting of the the quantum continuum, Ooh. right? So otherwise nothing will get done in the physical. Yeah. So it's interesting that. Yeah, this feels really good when I put the phenocyte here. It almost feels like uh it almost feels like divine fire, like but I, I want to use that divine fire burning into the heart. Like uh just getting that light directly into the heart. It feels a lot like uh yeah. <laughs> Hmm. It's such a small piece. I I got mine from the the Vesica Institute um, Pure, and they're the ones that make the 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 pentas the these solutions. Mm -hmm. And I got um, a little vial of gem quality phenakite that I haven't touched. So it's like it's still in the little vial. Mm. And I just ordered um, their crystal vials for making solution for their their quartz vials for making, um, so, you know, uh, I can't even talk it's, it's keeping me from being able to talk for being able to make potentized um, gemstone solutions. That's fantastic. Uh... As you were saying that, I was thinking of the the Facebook group and how I it, it's there, but I'm not engaging with it as much as I, I, I don't even want to say as much as I want to. Uh, I don't know. I'm still, I'm still, there's still a lot of old stuff that I need to resolve. And what I, that's what I'm faced with right now is this all the, the, the really the one conflict that I have which is finally it presented itself like you know 15 minutes before the end of this journey with you today is all of the stuff that i haven't had the opportunity to bring closure to or completion to right and it's physical stuff it's energetic stuff it's projects that are important to me that i i feel i or i'm attached to that i want to get done before this new um chapter really starts to uh, unfold. And it's carving the time, devoting the time to these older projects while balancing with the current uh, activities that will, you know, not just to, to prevent any uh, um, interruptions from occurring. It's like an artful dance. And that's really what I'm focused on right now. And as I say that, what comes to my mind is trust. 
trust in the universe, trust in the abundant universe, knowing that if I pull myself away from income generating activities, yes, I understand uh, that and, and get these other things done, I will have more of my energy and attention available to these uh, current income generating activities. And that's really important. I need to understand that. So that if a, a last minute client texts today, I'll have the power and the faith to say, I'm already booked today. <laughs> so so as, as you're talking about finishing old stuff, right? Mm -hmm. I, I, I saw, you know, somebody mentioned that one of the planets just went retrograde. Mm -hmm. And I think that was Venus. So I just looked up which, which planets are retrograde right now. Seven planets are in retrograde this summer. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of retrograde energy clearing out old stuff. <sighs> That's why I switched to the 144. So it's like thinking about stirring, stirring up, stirring up the old stuff mm -hmm. and releasing it. Yeah. You know, it's like one of the things that I have been um, working on starting to, to provide for other people is conscious awareness of, you know, limiting beliefs and what does it take to actually clear them, like mm -hmm. really clear them and mm -hmm. have there be change that occurs in people's lives and clearing out the old stuff and the belief systems mm -hmm. and the things that no longer fit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. For, for me, uh, it, my, part, of my, part of my understanding of that is it's just like when you are uh, re uh, repatterning neural pathways, especially for postural realignment. Uh, it's about uh, at the at the very core of it. It's constant monitoring, vigilance, and awareness of your movements, and correcting it, correcting when you notice it's uh, not in alignment. And the same thing with thought patterns and belief structures. It's not like you say it once and it's over. But what you have to do is, first of all, be kind to yourself, fundamentally be kind to yourself. And then, uh oh, that was limiting. And because like, I, I don't do it very often right now because I'm very I become very successful at, at releasing the limiting thoughts and programs that I say. And now I pause and I have to be I have to I have to qualify whether or not knowing what I'm going to say is limiting. But is it necessary in the moment as a didactic moment, an opportunity for whoever I'm communicating with? <laughs> but what I do, and if you might have seen, is I say cancel, and I, I literally, and I flip it, and I throw it away. But it's about oh, and then my mind says, okay, well we're not going to do that, and and you just keep doing it as long as you need to. Twenty years from now, I might say the word try in a limiting capacity, and I'll go oh my, you know, and then that's it. <laughs> <laughs> like cancel you know but you, <laughs> you know i say that i you know i had well you know yeah i do it all the time with my clients i listen to what i listen to their language and I, i've also realized i i need to also discern their level of of awareness mm -hmm. and their level of openness i drove i i i, I turned a client a prospective client away because I, I listened to their five minute talk and there was a limit, 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 limit. And before we even scheduled and got into a physical session on the phone, I, I, I said, oh, just let me give you some advice here. You know, I'd like you to start to focus on, you know, getting rid of this, getting rid of the word try, getting rid of this, getting rid of the word limit. And, and, just, and then he just like freaked out and reacted because it was the nature of his comfort. Is it, and it was a very strong walled shell that he needs to stay within right now. And, and he, he, didn't, he went with another healer. Don't know. He might come back into my path. That's fine. But I, and what I did is I just sent him love, uh, you know, a little nudge of love to send him on his way, realizing that this person is not ready for the level of medicine that I have to offer. And that's it. And that's fine. My another client, I was she was talking about she was feeling uh, she was limiting just like I wasn't honoring my successes. She wasn't honoring her accomplishments. 
and I, I, of how far she's progressed in her spiritual growth in such a long, short period of time, because she feels like she hasn't done enough. I haven't done enough. I haven't done enough. And I said to her, I said, I said, does the sapling uh, judge itself for not being the tree? No, it knows in its code, it will be the tree. So, and then she, you know, she was like, oh yeah. I said, so, and, and very simply, I said, instead of, instead of the, instead of feeling how you haven't done enough, say like, wow, I've accomplished a lot and I look forward, I'm excited to accomplish more, or I am strong right now. And I, like I told her, I said, I don't take supplements because I think that I'm weak. I take supplements because I'm strong and I want to be stronger. That's a very different mindset. And that's one way to branch out of lack mentality and limitation. It's just a shift in perspective, but a shift in perspective, especially a 180 shift is probably, it's one of the most basic yet powerful transformations in the world, right? What if I'm standing somewhere and it's sunrise and I'm facing west and I'm missing the sunrise and the whole day I'm slowly turning my head while the, you know, to the east, while the sun's slowly making its way to the west, and suddenly I'm facing due, west, um, due east, and the sun's setting in the west. What exactly have I missed? There's a great book that I want to recommend to you, The Gap and the Gain. Mm. And it's exactly what you're talking about. So I just, put, um, there's a co-author that, whose name I don't remember, but I put it in the chat for you. By, by Dan Sullivan and I don't remember the, remember the, the, the main author's, the, the other author's name, but mm -hmm. um, what you're talking about is people being in the gap and you're helping them to see things mm -hmm. from the perspective of the game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. you will really like this book. What if I told you I'm the co-author? <laughs> When, when Eckhart Tolle came out with A New Earth, my mom, she's like, Brad, you could write something like this. And I was just like, yeah, I know. <laughs> and it took me a long time to actually humble myself to read it. And it was cute. I didn't learn anything new. The one thing, the one thing I picked up from that book, the one thing that stuck with me, because it's, it's preaching to a choir, hell, it's singing in the choir with the, the other choristers, was the metaphor of the two monks that are walking along and um, uh, there was, uh, you know, there was a woman at the other end of a puddle and the one monk took off his, his robe and he put it on the puddle and the woman walked, you know, over the robe and he picked up the robe and they both kept walking along. A mile or so later, the other monk turned to him and he's like, I can't believe that, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, what do you mean? I left that woman at the puddle. Why have you been carrying her on your back? Yeah, yeah. And that was, the, that was, that was a really good metaphor. I really liked that. I really liked that. But I've got the sapling and the tree metaphor, so... <laughs> No, no, he's, he does great work. He does good work. Good work. He's, he's one of the good guys. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, I was going to copy the name of the book. So, yeah, you know, I would love to read it. I did read, um, I read, oh, why aren't you working? I read the, um, I read Louise Hayes, You Can Heal Your Life. Yeah. And why don't, why is this, it's not letting me copy from this chat into my phone it should because my computer and phone are very incestuous anyway <laughs> the, the gap in the game I just type it yeah so yeah and i found great value in that in such of the simple truths just begin you know it's for me when i was younger i had a big i, I had big arrogance and ego about myself even though i didn't think that i did I, I assumed I didn't need to fill in the blank because I was already fill in the blank. And that denied me uh, some great experiences, some richness of experience and some nuances, added nuances. You know, everyone has their own uh, divine expression, uh, divine perception and divine understanding. And every, everyone is worthy of uh, appreciation and, not, and even adoration 
at the level of their self-actualization, right? And to not uh, gift oneself with experiencing someone else's divine expression is uh, a failure in a sense. It's a loss. It's a missed opportunity for knowledge. And so I, I, you know, I wanted to read her book and I did, and I found it so, so fulfilling and rewarding. And I, I just, because I comprehend, I understand exactly what she's doing. It's nothing new to me, but the way that she offers it is a different way. It's like a different recipe to make a chocolate cake. You know, it's like, we all love the chocolate cake. Why don't we try this recipe? Oh, this has a gooey inside. You know, that kind of thing. She has a gooey inside to her chocolate cake. So, yeah. And I've used some of her affirmations and they have been alchemical because millions of people yes. have used her affirmations. Yes. Just like the Nam Myoho Rankyu, if you want to tap into that, you know, there's Buddhists that chant that 24 7. It is in the sphere for us to tap into. But for us Westerners, what does Nam Myoho Rankyo really mean? It means that's a funny, nonsensically sounding you know, phrase that a bunch <laughs> of monks meditate for, the, you know, for their entire lives. I'm not to devalue that. I don't even know what it translates to, it's to but it's, it's inaccessible to our conscious mind. And therefore it's inaccessible to our bodies in a sense, because our bodies go with where our mind goes. And if we don't understand something, how will our body be able to assimilate it if it doesn't understand anything? It's like eating plastic and having to put it in your adipose tissue. That's not the exact phrase. <laughs> but I mean, I don't think Nam Myoho Renkyo Ren is like eating plastic, but you know, it, but the, the simple affirmations of like, I love myself, I accept myself, um, I, I approve of myself, that's powerful. What would you rather say over and over again? Nam Myoho Renkyo or I love myself, I approve of myself, I accept myself? Hmm. Because you can actually feel the resistance if you still have some self uh, healing to do. Yes. Even I did, you know, there's a little bit of like, no, I'm not, am I? I don't know. You know, who told me that I wasn't? Well, you know, take a number. You know, that's the nature of, of childhood is adults don't understand. And we don't understand that they don't understand because to us, our, our parents and our, our uh, upbringing, our, uh, the people in our upbringing environment though they are the world to us until we grow beyond that understanding yeah and sometimes that can carry into adulthood you know understand that your parents were just people you know my, my you know i remember when i was 30 my father had already had he i was already five years old when my father had you know and i was like if i had a five-year-old at 30 <laughs> you know my dad was doing the best he could but that's just something that that's an awakening that adults is usually reserved for adults, but a lot of kids have to have that uh, early, I guess they call it the rude awakening, you know, uh, it's quite rude because they, they shouldn't have to go through that. But we all know that we all choose our circumstances and on some level they had planned to have some sort of experience that would contribute to their, uh, their agenda for this incarnation. And that's why we do have to take full responsibility for everything that we find in our lives on a very high level. So I think you've heard me say that, you know, my inner six year old pulls my circuit breakers until yeah. I become aware of it mm -hmm. and choose differently as a conscious adult to no longer have the child yeah. self mm -hmm. put the brakes on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my, the problem with me, you know, my mom had those like childproof things, all the cabinets with chemicals. I knew how I figured out how to open them. So <laughs> I like, you know, I would, it wouldn't really, uh, you know, my, my inner child, I have to like, you know, instead of, instead of like, instead of telling him, you know, instead of trying to keep him away from my circuit breakers, I had to explain to him what the circuit breakers were, why they were there and why it's in his best interest not to. And once he was given that information and respect, he didn't leave them alone. <laughs> Yeah, you know. Oh my goodness! Well, what a ride today has been. This is so much fun. I know, right? We could do this all the time. I am. This is fantastic content. I'm not even gonna put it in the descript because I, I, I'm still having trouble with that that program. It's a little bit, it's a little bit cumbersome for my for my 
for my beliefs. You know, I'm so much more familiar with, with logic. You know, I just, I put the, but the only thing in logic, I can't, uh, I can't edit the video. I can't take part of a video and move it here. So yeah. my, my, my ideal comprehension is just clean it up and descript, rearrange it and descript, then bounce it to, to logic and then do the rest of the processing there. But um, anyway, it is what it is. But this has been really fun and very, very helpful today. I believe I celebrated um, my accomplishments with you quite adequately. And I think I'll call that the name of this, this video, Celebrating Accomplishments. Awesome. Yeah. Thank yes. you. So what's next? Um, we don't have anything scheduled. Yeah, let's do that. I also want to start really creating that physical container for uh, a return trip next May-ish. So I'm, I'm meeting with um, Charlene on Thursday. Uh, yeah, and I don't necessarily, I don't necessarily, I don't know what we're going to talk about. We haven't talked since I saw her. So we're probably going to like, you know, get gap, giving it a lot of everything. Um, but yeah, so let's, uh, yeah, next week. Um, well, mm, mm, I don't know if, uh, sorry. What good, what's good for you? It's time for you to receive. Yes, and your schedule is probably more limited than mine. So why don't you tell me? Well, I can't believe that. Uh, Wednesday the 2nd. Okay, I can do Wednesday the 2nd. I am available either at 9 a.m. Eastern or uh, uh, 2 p.m. Eastern and later. 2 p.m. is 11 for me. I can do 2 p.m. You got it. Okay. Thank you. All right. Would you like a copy of this recording? Uh, no, I think this one's really... Find it on Facebook, on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, no, th this one was great for you to keep. Yeah. But yeah. I, don't, I don't really need this one, I don't think. Okay. But Thank you. It, in, in a sense, this is a very organic uh, testimonial to your biofield tuning sessions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because I, quite honestly, I feel terrific. Uh, earlier, ye yesterday when I came home from my stuff, I didn't want to do anything. I just wanted to, to unplug. I wanted to disconnect. I wanted to push all my responsibilities away. I was like, this is too much. This morning, I laid in bed. I got up. I watched Netflix. And I was like, oh, my God, I got to get up. And then I was like, OK, here I am with Sandra. And then now I'm like, yes. <laughs> so that's sorry. It's a little exaggerated. But that I do feel uh, uh, rejuvenated and jubilant inside myself right now and i fully believe that when we disconnect from this i'm not going to go back to the couch <laughs> i'm actually very motivated to to continue and to uh continue this vibration which is what i've been searching for for years this inner flame and you know the little phenakite medicine uh Ooh. yeah it's uh thank you for bringing it out today now you can send it to me because that last part was awesome. Oh, sure thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. We are, this is, this is, I'm going to say one last thing. This is, this is real work. This is how I believe real healing work occurs. Well, a certain level of it, you know, it's very, it, you and I have both done a lot of inner work on ourselves with others. You know, it is our passion that that for healing and in order for one's profession to be healing, one must be willing to go through the process themselves. You know, people go through extensive training in any of their professions. Well, this is what training and healing alternative healing looks like. It's not going to classes. It's not reading a manual. It's not learning a procedure. It's actually embodying the process and finding those who are resonant uh with resonant um 
uh, uh, with uh, what are they? Sorry, they're really weird words right now. Uh, resident uh, identity co uh, compatibility uh, that really where the real great magic occurs. And the, if you, I'm sure you feel it right now, this energy, uh, this quantum energy resonance that you and I are generating is a sphere that's it's a, like expanding and affecting the collective. It's power. This is why collaboration is so important. It's not so that you're just doing it on yourself. It's because the amplification of the work is so much greater when you're working in in partnership or in group. Absolutely, I don't think I don't think it's possible to do the real work by myself. Yeah, yeah, some yeah. of it. It really happens most when you take what's up today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And do the work with it. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah. such an honor that you ask me to do that and be be one of those people that yeah. helps you do that. An honor to be one of those people that helps you. Absolutely. Do that. <laughs> <That's t> <laughs> thank okay. you, thank you. Say say goodbye, Venus. I <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> it likes you okay All right. <laughs> goodbye see you next week yes